Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of the fourth season we're currently working on, but that also means you got three seasons worth to catch up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so because each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. You know, the end of the calendar year is always a good time to kind of regroup, take stock of what we accomplished during the year, and think about things that we wanna do going forward into the new year. We're hours away from 2022, and as far as the channel goes, we got a lot done this year. We rolled out some new programs, started doing more live streams, and overall really grew everything. Thanks to your support, we've even doubled the amount of folks that subscribe and tune in weekly to Large Format Friday. That is just crazy to think of. So thank you all again so much for your support, uh, and an extra special thank you to all of you LFF sustaining members, helping keep the lights on and helping me, you know, forward all this other crazy stuff. That, uh, that happens in the large format hobby. But getting back to the roots of Large Format Friday, it's talking about the cameras and some of the gear, I wanted to bring on the show something that hasn't shown up in quite a few episodes. And that's gonna be my 8x10 Takahara. Here she is right here. I say she because she actually has a name. So this is my 8x10 folding field camera. Uh, her name is Madoka, uh, and that's because that's the family name that was carved into her before I got her here back in 2013. We've been through some tough times. I have definitely used and abused this camera probably more than one should for a field camera, but overall pretty sturdy with the tripod setup and has served me super, super well. But thinking back to how long I've been working with this camera and large format in general, I also started to think, huh, What's my most commonly used lens for large format photography? Well, it shouldn't come as a surprise that it's actually my standard lens. A standard lens or normal focal length lens is one that reproduces a field of view similar to what our own vision does. The one I'm currently using is my Schneider G Claron. This is a 355 millimeter or 14 inch F9. A lot of lenses in this focal length range don't go very, very fast. They don't go so wide open, uh, but a lot of them are in the F6.8, F8, and F9 varieties. The very first lens I had with my Eastman Commercial B, my oldest field camera from my uh, photography professor, Spencer, was a 14 inch Goer's Red Dot RTAR. Now that was a lens from the late 40s, early 50s. As far as I could tell, it was mounted in an Acme Ilex number four shutter, and it was an awesome lens to work with. I found out really quickly that those particular Goer's lenses uh, were super sharp and had a decent amount of coating on them, but they also didn't cast that wide of an image circle. I had no idea what that stuff was my first few outings when I started playing around with my camera movements and I noticed my corners were clipped. Uh, but now after years of practicing and reading up on things like your image circle and field of view, I've arrived at this particular lens because it gives me a little bit of future proofing but also gives me a pretty standard field of view. So one other way to approximate a standard or a normal focal length lens is to just throw up the old horse blinders here. So take your two hands and put them right up to your temples and that's gonna give you a pretty normal perspective. There's a lot of focal lengths that kind of occupy that, especially in large format because we don't have any zooms in large format, we just have distinct focal lengths along the way. And going through my archive of pictures I've taken for almost 12 years in large format, over 50% of the pictures taken were with my standard lens and about a third of what I end up sharing or post, which is a pretty good return rate, are also with the standard lens. Now standard lenses, depending on which eight x 10 shooter you talk to, are gonna be anywhere between a 300 millimeter and a 400 millimeter lens. That's kind of that standard territory. In four x five, which is gonna be more common amongst uh, the viewers at home, is gonna be something like a 150 millimeter lens. It could be a little bit shorter at 135, it could be a little bit longer at about 180. Older texts on 4x5 will also state a 210 as kind of a normal field of view, but that ends up being a smidge longer, closer to about 65-ish millimeters, which is just a hair closer in. A 210 in 4x5 would be very similar to what we see in 8x10 with a 480 millimeter lens. Tends to be a little bit long for me. Anyway, back to my normal lens. 
Now the G Clarion that I currently use is a little bit different from the Red Dot RTAR that I was using before. They're both F9, but that's about where the similarities end. Uh, the goers had a much shorter image circle. It was really, it kind of capped out at eight by 10, whereas the G Clarion was designed per its data sheet to 10 by 12 inch film, but has an image circle that far exceeds that. A lot of these Schneider process lenses like this G Clarion were very, very conservative on what they are able to cover. Because this is a lens that was used for process cameras, it is specialized for working in one to one magnification ratio. That's life size reproduced on your imaging plane like we talked about in the macro episode. I've used this lens personally on eight by 20, and I know it covers even a little bit more than that if we're doing something closer up with 12 by 20 and 16 by 20. That's a massive image circle, though you do have to stop it down beyond F16, preferably F22. And when I was looking at the data sheet, I always wonder, why do they state the lenses at really high f-stops, f16 and f22? And that's because when you go that high, it makes sure you're not getting any sort of what's called mechanical vignetting. And that's vignetting that's introduced by things like the bellows or the other lens elements when it's in the camera, which is pretty clever. When I was looking through my archives for pictures taken with this lens, I was really surprised to see so many that felt like they were wider angle pictures when they just happen to be for my standard lens. That's the beauty and versatility of a normal focal length lens. As long as you have the distance to work, so if you're doing close-ups and portraits, the ability to get closer and have a lot of bellows on your camera, a lens like this is gonna be perfect. And if you have the ability and extra distance to back up, you're gonna have quite a lot of capability there as well. I was super surprised. A lot of the landscapes that I thought were taken with my wider field of view lenses were actually done with this guy right here and they did an awesome job. I know this might sound really obvious, like, yeah, duh, of course the standard lens is your most used lens, but it kind of took me by surprise, especially considering the last couple years here on the channel, I've been showing a heck of a lot of work made with my super wide and my medium wide angle lenses, which I definitely still think are up there in my favorites, but as far as work that ends up getting shared and kind of the lenses that I just unconsciously reach for, it's always a standard type lens. And I say standard type because this isn't my only standard lens. It's just one of two. The other one I got for a steal a few years back is this one right here. This is a Cineron S. 360 millimeter f 6.8. It is mounted in a Cinar DB shutter, which is one that goes on my Cinar camera with the Cinar shutter. You may have seen that way back in season one uh, in the Cinar I Love You episode. And this one is great because it's a super modern, I think this is a plasmat design. This lens is a bit more modern than the G Clairon, but the trade-off is it's gonna have less image circle. And I think overall, uh, this one is gonna look better if I'm doing things like portraits and color, but it is like super sharp. Sometimes the bokeh, if you wanna call it that, from the G Clairon can be a bit, I don't know, uh, it can has like this texture to it, uh, and sometimes it feels like everything is over sharpened. Like when you pull the clarity and texture slider in Photoshop too far, uh, that's what the G Clarion just looks like by default. Whereas this one has a bit of a smoother roll off, but one of the downsides to this, well, it's mounted on this DB board. I don't have this in a Copal 3 shutter, so it doesn't hang out with me in the field. And honestly, uh, when I got my Takahara, it had a similar lens to this. It had a Schneider Simar S. 360, 6.8, and the only downside of that lens is it was just so huge. Um, you get to a point where if you are hiking around in the field, it's a balance. You want something that has a look that you like, but you also wanna be able to like make it to the shot. So if you're gonna be hiking a good amount of distance, having a lens that weighs what two, maybe three lenses in your kit could weigh, it could take away from the overall experience. This one isn't the smallest 300 lens that's out there, but it's relatively small considering its coverage and other capabilities. So I ended up with this one for the field and this one for the studio. Another reason was it was really, really cheap. Most lenses in Cinar DB boards cost a less than half of what they would in a normal shutter. The downside, you have to purchase a Cinar shutter, which are getting rarer and rarer. In addition to hyping up standard lenses for large format, I also wanted to let everybody know that this upcoming Sunday, January 2nd, is my birthday. And to celebrate 36 years here on planet Earth, I wanted to celebrate it with everybody at home. So I'm gonna be hosting a live stream. So from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm gonna be up here at 400 West Rich, well, 
in there printing. I'm going to be doing some more of the kalotype printing process like we were doing on the Bob Ross episode last week. And if you have any questions along the way, I'll be taking Q&A and kind of showing everybody around. Another thing I'm going to be doing to help celebrate the birthday is I wanted to offer something special uh, for folks that maybe didn't get a chance to get in a print before the holiday season. And I'm going to be doing a birthday print sale. Now, this isn't an original idea. I'm kind of stealing this from a photographer I've been following for the last decade, Mr. Ray Bidigan. Each year on his birthday, Ray will do a print sale where he'll offer select prints for the price of his age that year, which I think is a really, really great idea. But if you're younger, well, that could be quite a steal on a print. But I'm going to stick to the plan. I'm 36, so all day Sunday, January 2nd, if you go to mirage.com slash prints, 8x10 RC contact prints are going to be exactly $36. Shipping will still very much apply, but it's a great way to collect some prints and still get a handmade print from yours truly. Now there are some that I can't print in silver gelatin because they're like really old or foggy negatives or ones maybe I even lost. So those will be available in inkjet as well, but 36 bucks, it's a great way to save. As always, if you have any questions about the large format photographic process, you can drop those down below in the comments. And for those long form questions, be patient, but you can hit me up largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by. Hopefully, I'll catch you Sunday on my birthday, and we'll see you next week for more LFF.